Hi friends, uh, I'm Piali and uh, I run an Agile community named Discuss Agile Network. And today we have a very special guest uh, with us, Arne. Arne is a certified Scrum trainer from Sweden. And today he will be talking about the role of a product owner. Arne, uh, firstly, I would request you to tell us something more about yourself. Yes, hi Piali, how are you doing? Good. So it's about noon in Sweden right now. So, uh, well, I, I run my own company called Accurate. Uh, so I'm an independent consultant uh, offering services uh, in uh, Agile and Scrum, Lean and uh, product management. And that's because I have a background in uh, product management. I used to be a product manager and VP of product management in a, in a traditional setting. Uh, Ten years ago, I uh, got an interest in uh, Agile and understood that Agile is good also for a product owner role, not only for the teams. So what I do today, I help organizations and the people within organizations to uh, think for themselves, uh, make their own decisions, and challenge their assumptions. Um, so that's basically what I'm offering. Okay, interesting. So Arne, on your view, what are the characteristics of a successful product owner? Um, a successful product owner needs to be able to look in different directions. So uh, a successful product owner should be customer-centric, understand the needs of customers and users, uh, also being good at uh, understanding value creation. How can we offer value to our customers and uh, our users? Uh, the other direction that I need to take in, uh, to be a successful uh, product owner is collaboration with the development team or development teams developing the product. Uh, because uh, I need to be present, I need to be available, I need to help them uh, clarify things uh, throughout development. And uh, it's very good if I if I uh, inspect their results uh, from time to time. So in an iterative approach at Scrum, after each uh, sprint, I should participate in the sprint review, uh, but I should definitely inspect the results during the sprint as well, because the development team will probably have things finished uh, in the middle of the, of the sprint or even before that. So that interaction, that collaboration, both with stakeholders like customers and uh, users, uh, those are external stakeholders, internal stakeholders, and definitely the interaction and collaboration with the development team is important. Assuming I'm a product owner, now what all I need to do to become a successful product owner? Um, yeah, of course, it depends on what you're able to do today, what kind of uh, artifacts you already have produced and uh, what kind of uh, tools you're using, what kind of uh, collaboration ways you're using. So um, uh, in order to become a really successful product owner, uh, it's definitely good to have a product vision. So put together a product vision and also communicate your product vision. Uh, Make sure that stakeholders are aligned and make sure that development team or development teams understand the product vision so that they can use that as a guidance uh, and also to help them stay focused on what they're doing. It's so easy to do something slightly different than what the product vision says. So it helps us to, uh, to stay focused. So a product vision is very, very good to have. Um, some sort of... Uh, some sort of roadmap for future development is good to have as well. I think that the product backlog, uh, uh, one of the important artifacts in Scrum, is, is good to use as, as a roadmap. But if you need more than that, that could be good. Uh, some sort of business case, even though that is not uh, an artifact in Scrum, but understanding in what way should we create um, value and can we create value and, and what is the business benefit of it um, understanding what is business value in our sense so creating a business value model uh, understanding if it's uh, only making money if it's a customer satisfaction or a combination of different things and uh, my recommendation is 
if you are thinking of business value as only making money, then you may need to consider other aspects of business value as well. So you have tangible business value, but also intangible, like customer value, uh, building your brand, uh, usability, and things like that. So a business value model is good as well. So a couple of things like uh, uh, product vision, product backlog, and uh, a business value model. Okay. Uh, so principles to be followed as a successful product owner. Uh, well, I like to go back to the values of the Agile uh, Manifesto, where we say uh, uh, individuals and interaction are valued over processes and tools. So that's important to remember for a, a product owner as well. So the collaboration and communication, both with stakeholders and the teams, as I mentioned before, um, and also the principles of the Agile Manifesto. There are a couple of principles that are um, good for a product owner to, to know about. The, the first one, with our top priority to deliver value early and frequently to our customers. Um, that is something uh, to think about. Um, also, remembering that um, I should focus on what, and I should leave the field free for the development team to focus on uh, on how, how to uh, implement the product, who should do what, in what order, and so on, and not meddle too much in, in that. Um, so those are a couple of, of principles. Understanding, uh, having some agreements and understandings between me as a product owner and the development team is really good to have as well. Uh, and what I'm thinking especially about is uh, definition of done. When the development team says, now we're done, what does that really mean? Because uh, it may mean that we are totally done, but it may also be need that we have been forced to save a couple of things for later. Uh, also, a definition of ready is really, really good to have. What does it mean when we say that this item on the product backlog is ready for sprint planning? Uh, is it clear to the development team? Is it small enough for them to bring it into the sprint and so on? So those are a couple of things. Arne, you have been training many people in India. Uh, what happens most of the time, who is the product owner? That person is not present here. He is somewhere in US or some other country. And somebody from the local team is playing the role of the product owner. Now, in that context, how the product owner role should be adapted? I know about this uh, setup and to my experience that uh, that is true in many cases. And uh, uh, to be totally truthful or honest, uh, it's not an ideal situation. And uh, the reason why it's not ideal is that you want the collaboration between the product owner and the development team to be really close. And uh, distance in geography and time zones doesn't make that easier. So what is the second best that you can get? I think that every um, company and every team and product owner, they should think about, okay, what do we believe is ideal? And if we cannot get the ideal, what is second best for us? So maybe focusing on how can we communicate better, even though we're not in the same place. And maybe having someone on the same side at the develop, as the development team, as you mentioned, uh, to be the voice of the product owner. That usually means that decisions are not taken as fast as they would have been if the product owner, the real product owner, were in the right, in the same place as the development team. So thinking about, okay, what is the best? Can we actually get the best? So the best would be to have the, the distant product owner in the same place as the development team. Can we have that from time to time? Maybe the product owner can visit the team every third month or anything like that to sort out the big communication uh, challenges and then uh, work closely together with someone who is on the same side as the development team. I think those are a couple of things that you, uh, you could look for. But uh, start where you are and try to figure out how can we get as close to the ideal situation as possible? Well, uh, any tool in your view which should be used to become a successful product owner? Uh, so tools could be different things. Tools could be uh, 
uh, software tools, of course. Uh, tools could be different ways we use to communicate. Uh, it could be tools for understanding. Uh, so a couple of tools that I have found very useful are focusing on understanding the customer situation. So a uh, value proposition canvas is something uh, from a man called Alex Osterwalder. And he's written uh, great books about uh, business model uh, uh, generation and uh, value proposition uh, uh, creation as well. So uh, value proposition canvas is something where you take a look at the customer situation. What is our customer segment or segments and what do we observe? What can we observe when looking at them doing what they're supposed to do? Uh, so for example, let's say that I'm a, a person who wants to make travel arrangements. Uh, what's, what, what is the job of me? Well, it's finding uh, travel opportunities, making reservations, getting tickets, and things like that. Uh, and what is hard when I'm doing that? Uh, what is painful? What are the pains? And what am I wishing for? What, what gains am I wishing for? Uh, those are things that you can observe. And based on those observations, uh, you can design uh, an offer, a service or a product that helps the customer do the job uh, in a better way, in an easier way, in a, in a more uh, qualitative way, uh, in a faster way. Um, and uh, also, that offer the product or the service should all, all, of course have paid relievers and gain creators. So um, uh, value proposition canvas is something that I find very, very valuable. So I like to talk about thinking tools um, because the technical tools, you, you will figure out what you need and, and what is good in your uh, specific uh, context. Uh, the thinking tools are the, the interesting things, if you ask me. So the, that is one example where you focus very much about on the customer situation, the user situation, to better understand that. And um, as a successful product owner, you should focus very much on the customer situation. And of course, being available to the development team. So any tools helping you in your uh, conversation, in your collaboration, in communication with the development team is good to use as well, of course. Well, uh, anything else, Arne, from your side, do you wanna share or add on the product owner role, uh, which might be useful for our audience? A product owner is really, really good to have. That's what I call the what role in Scrum. Uh, understanding what is the right product to build, and also trying to uh, discover things as early as possible. So keep on working in the iterative way as uh, Scrum is uh, created, and uh, uh, make sure that it's possible for the development team to deliver in an incremental way, because then we can inspect and we can discover uh, even better things to add to the product. So continuously work on improving the product increment and the product as a total while we're working together, instead of trying to figure that out uh, from the beginning. Because uh, uh, if we lived in the fairy tales, of course, it would be possible for for the customer to fully understand what the customer wants. It would be possible for the developers to fully understand how to implement and nothing would change. But uh, fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look upon it, we don't live in uh, fairy tales. We live in the real world where customers and uh, stakeholders, they discover what they want when they see things. And development teams, they discover how to implement things when they have tried out different ways. And of course, things change. The reality change. Uh, competitors, they come up with better things than what they have today. So we may be forced to come up with even better things. And the best thing, of course, if we can compete uh, with ourselves to actually be the one disrupting our product instead of having competitors doing that. Thanks, Arne. Uh, thanks for sharing your thoughts and insights about the product owner role. And uh, friends, Arne is also doing a webinar with us on 12th of April, uh, the next Wednesday, which is uh, uh, which will start on 7.30 p.m. Indian Standard Time. So please do join us for knowing more about uh, the product owner from Arne. 
thanks for joining and uh, thank you arne thanks for joining in okay thanks for the conversation looking forward for uh, when to wednesday thank you arne